It's a good Ag AM in Kansas morning. Good morning. Let's take a look and see what's coming up today. Join us today at the No Till on the Plains Winter Conference. First, we get an overview of the organization from President Ryan Spears. Then Randy Small discusses relay cropping, and Keith Thompson shares his experiences incorporating no-till into his Osage County operation to curb soil loss and conserve water. Then Sean Tiffany talks about how he integrates no-till and cover crops into his custom cattle feeding operation. Finally, we meet 4-H'ers Brooke and Brady Regeer. Closed captioning brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress, powered by Kansas farmers. This segment is brought to you by Kansas Wheat. Learn more at rediscoverwheat.org. Uh, this is Ryan Spear, President of No-Till on the Plains, and this is the 19th annual uh, winter conference uh, that we put on every year. Here we usually come up with a certain theme where we want the conference to be headed. Uh, some years it's, you know, maybe a, a emphasis on equipment or soil health. This year, uh, fairly heavily into uh, grazing livestock in conjunction with no-till and cover crops and how all those uh, synergize together. Uh, so there's usually a theme that, that kind of angles you towards certain speakers and then always, you know, uh, no Tell on the Plains has a wide group of contacts and, and board members and where we can reach out to, to speakers that fit the, you know, whatever goals the, that we have for the year. Uh, no Tell on the Plains started fairly small and has grown over the years and we've kind of, we've kind of got our normal group that we deal with. Uh, we do bus tours in the summer uh, where, where farmers can actually go to other people's farms and learn, actually see what they're doing in the fields. And so that's a big part of what we do. We, we try to do uh, summer tours, uh, we call them whirlwinds, maybe a one day event uh, at a location with, with whatever theme we're doing, uh, different practices, different states. Uh, one thing no-till on the plains has gotten much broader. Uh, we're, we're doing tours into Oklahoma. We've always went to the Dakotas. Uh, you know, in the future, we'll probably branch up into Ohio and those kinds of areas, uh, areas for summer tours. We always have a strongest uh, strongest membership uh, in the Kansas area. You know, let's say 65 to 70 percent of people that come to the conference are from Kansas. Uh, we have a pretty good following in Nebraska and the Dakotas, uh, and it seems to really be picking up in Oklahoma and Texas. Um, no tills a little, I wouldn't say new there, but newer. Uh, not not as many acres in those areas, uh, and then we usually have. A, not a lot, but we'll have, I know there's some, a few people here from New York State, uh, we're from Australia, you know, we, we do, we don't have a lot, but we do have an international draw usually. For me personally, you know, I have a passion for soil health and, and improving the soil and I've seen the benefits and, um, you know, a lot of it we've done on our own, but a tremendous amount of the stuff we've done has been learned at this conference, uh, you know. Uh, just speaking to other producers that are doing it instead of stumbling it through yourself. I mean, it just saves so much time and energy and it's, you know, there's so much more that we know than we did 15 years ago. The process can be sped up much faster uh, through the use of cover crops and some different things to where your soil structure can start changing. Instead of the old thing was it took three to five years before you could make any significant changes. Now I'd say you can do it in two. Uh, it takes much more education, a much higher level of management, uh, but it can be done. And that's one thing that, that the no-till is, is much higher level of management than, than conventional farming practices. I'm Dr. Frank Lyons, a physician here at Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. As one of the only standalone stem cell centers in the U.S., we use your stem cells as therapy for arthritis and some autoimmune diseases. I'm Dr. Andrew Pope. Here at Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center, utilizing the latest technology under strict protocols, we're able to harvest your stem cells from your own fat to treat a variety of medical conditions. The best part about it is, it's a same-day surgical procedure and requires no general anesthesia. 
Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture, represents grassroots agriculture. The state's largest and most powerful farm organization stands up for its members through leadership development, agriculture education, legal defense, environmental advocacy, farm safety, and risk management. Members also enjoy money-saving benefits. To join our organization today or to learn more, go to www.kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Tall Grass Commodities offers producers bulk commodities at a reasonable price with reliable service throughout the whole Midwest. To find out more about Tall Grass Commodities, visit tallgrass.us or call 785-494-8484. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Ag AM in Kansas is brought to you in part by SureCrop, liquid crop nutrition delivered right to your farm. Uh, I'm honored to, to present here at No-Till on the Plains. Uh, tomorrow I'll be talking about uh, relay cropping, which most people don't understand what the principle of relay cropping is. We're actually planting a crop in a growing crop and before it's harvested, and so it, take some different management strategies and, and uh, different ways of thinking. Um, maybe a lot of planning as far as herbicide use the previous season, uh, considering what you're going to be doing that next year. This is something that uh, I grew up with in, in many instances. Uh, you know, in 1941, Kling Anderson with Kansas State University uh, had a circular published that uh, talked about using Korean Lespedeza and the preferred method of seeding was planting into a cereal grain crop. So uh, this is not something that's new. Sometimes I wonder if we just didn't forget about it. And uh, uh, most recently we've used uh, soybeans in the winter wheat and uh, has really helped our efficiency as far as labor and spreading out uh, equipment and, and our resources. We're also using some red clover and uh, brassicas in the fall and using them further after wheat harvest the next, next year. And I kind of like that system that uh, keeps us out of the field. We don't keep uh, going back and visiting the field with planting equipment. Um, we just harvest and harvest and harvest, whether it's with the uh, combine cattle or, or otherwise with the hay. So. My uh, grazing system with cattle, really, I would like to, to have more on the crop land, but uh, we're in a situation where uh, a good portion of our farmland is in the river bottom that floods uh, too frequently, I guess. Fencing and uh, trying to get cattle pulled off is not uh, that functional for us. Maybe our biggest concern right now is we've got uh, some reservoirs that were built in the 50s and 60s that uh, have silted in. Um, you know, their primary purpose when they were constructed was for flood control, and we've lost a lot of that capability with the uh, uh, filling up with the silt. And uh, I think that may be a, a big concern. We're uh, trying to figure out different ways of constructing uh, diversions or, or something to maybe keep from accumulating the silt. A couple of us had to. Uh, talked over lunch how these two days we probably learned more than we do in the whole whole year following but uh, uh, we really uh, do gain a lot of information talking to other producers and and uh, you know that's that's one way of, of learning and um, a lot of times I feel like we we don't try to keep ahead and, and if we don't uh, continue to learn we're actually going behind. This hog is Hanover hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. 
Buying a car shouldn't be this hard. And at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego, it isn't. It's actually awesome. Whether you want a new or used car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. Even if you want to custom order a new car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. See Toby's team at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. We're awesome. Tallgrass Commodities offers producers bulk commodities at a reasonable price with reliable service throughout the whole Midwest. To find out more about Tallgrass Commodities, visit tallgrass.us or call 785-494-8484. Hello friends, I'm Ernie Rodina. And I'm Don Dawson with the Better Horses Radio Show. For over nine years, we've been bringing the Better Horses Radio Show to markets all across the Midwest. We talk about God, lots about horses. We talk about cows, we talk about horse health, we talk to top trainers, and we even talk about Roy Rogers. We are having a blast with Better Horses Radio Show and would love to take it to a market near you. So visit our website at betterhorsesradio.com and let us or your local radio station know you'd like to hear it in your area. The Better Horses Radio Show is unbelievable. This segment is brought to you by Central National Bank. Put our ag professionals to work for you. My name is Keith Thompson. I'm from Osage City, Kansas. I've been a continuous no-tiller for since 1992, and I've been on the no-till board member for almost the inception of no-till on the plains. Um, we have uh, row crop cattle. We grow corn, soybeans, sunflowers, wheat, rye, and just whatever seems to be needed. Lots of cover crops. First time that I'd seen cover crops and covers being rolled down uh, was in 1999. We took a trip at uh, South America to Argentina, uh, specifically to look at no-till rotations and uh, long-term breaks. And that was there where I got introduced to uh, how they were using covers for cattle. Uh, first time I saw how they used um, long-term breaks to break up weed pressures. I remember uh, one of the pastures we was in, I was telling the guy that if I was concerned about how many thistles it had in the pasture. And I said, you know, in Kansas, that we would get a ticket for, for a noxious weed. And he said, well, I didn't, he couldn't understand why that was a problem because that was the last year that was a pasture. It's going to be three or four years of crops and there'd be no more thistles. And that was, I want to say the time that when it really got to my, understood how a, a long term doing something and a break from something would help you control weeds. Soil. One of the, you know, reasons I moved to no-till was to um, keep soil losses. I, we were seeing lots, I didn't like seeing the soil blow. I didn't like working worked ground again it was real rough and water conservation that was the reasons I got started with no-till but the longer you no-till you keep learning more and more and you find out that there's more to it than just not working the soil that's just step one and so then over the years I've learned the value of, of long-term rotations um, diversity into the landscape, uh, understanding how much intensity you have and the intensity is, is, is how the type of crop you plant, how quickly it uses up water. Uh, where I live, we actually started growing covers to use up excess water we had in the spring so we could just plant. Uh, that was, and then as further as you go west, well that becomes the opposite way. They, that's not a worry. So it kind of depends on, uh, we've used covers to manage uh, concerns we have. Uh, the number one thing that uh, is true about using a cover every time is we see less weeds in our crops. Like yeah. One of the things that I discovered first when I first started going to conferences about no-till was it dawned on me I need to get my rest of my family involved in coming to these. Uh, trying to explain this was almost too much trouble. I learned uh, how to take <coughs> pamphlets and things to my landlords so they could understand why I was doing what we were doing because it was, uh, you know, when we just started really using lots of covers in 2002, uh, it was seemed odd to a landlord like, what are you doing this? 
and then explaining the benefits of nutrient recycling. Uh, the big term now everybody uses is soil health. And, uh, and there is truth to a healthy soil grows healthier crops. They, you see it all the time. Uh, since we started using covers and doing no-till, I've cut my insecticide use, I would say 99%. And herbicide use, we don't have to use as much. There's, we still use herbicides. Uh, I don't, at this time, it's, it's something we have to use. Uh, I can see that with covers, we use less and less. And I know that I would say in the last 10 years, we've even cut our herbicide total use by half. Because a lot of times we don't ever have to spray a second time, a one-time deal. Between the covers and a, herb a pre controls our weeds for the summer. American innovation is being driven in places you might not expect by people like Brent Hayek, an Oklahoma family farmer, who recently set a world land speed record in a Ford Super Duty pickup truck powered by renewable B20 biodiesel. Advanced performance is here, now, putting America on the fast track to more jobs and energy independence. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. No matter where, no matter why, the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University is committed to providing quality patient care to animals and exceptional customer service to their owners. From routine checkups to emergency and specialty care, our world-renowned specialists and experienced professionals are here to discover, to teach, and to heal. Let us know. How can I help? How can we help? The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. When your living depends on agriculture, you can depend on KFRM 550 AM. If you're in the southwest three-fourths of Kansas or the northern half of Oklahoma, catch us at 550 AM on the radio dial. But if that isn't you, listen on your cell phone at TuneIn Radio or on your computer at KFRM.com. We promise to keep you informed, entertained, and company as you go through your day. KFRM 550 AM, the voice of the plains. We would like to join your management team. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. This segment is brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Well, I'm Sean Tiffany, and uh, I own and operate Tiffany Cattle Company at Harrington, Kansas with my brother Shane. We're primarily a custom feeding facility and I'm excited to be here at No-Till on the Plains, uh, both to learn and as a speaker. And I'm here to speak about integration of cover crops and soil health into a custom cattle feeding operation. Uh, we have been using cover crops for about, well, since 2010. And uh, it's been a evolution throughout that time frame from uh, strictly just grazing programs to uh, grazing and forage production, and then recently we've also added uh, cover crops to our farming systems uh, strictly for the, the role of soil health and, and soil improvement. Uh, from the grazing perspective, you know, it's cost advantageous to the customers. They get good grazing and cheap cost of gains for a portion of the year. Uh, for us as a commercial feed yard, uh, it's a way to manage our inventory of cattle coming into the yard, and uh, we then get the advantage uh, you know, our, our cost benefit in that is to get to feed the cattle, but then we also get the side benefits of erosion control, uh, soil health, uh, you know, feeding the microbes in the soil and all the other advantages that cover crops afford. And then as far as forage production, you know, we usually uh, use cover crops in that situation as a secondary crop. Uh, sometimes that crop is growing throughout the winter and we chop it in the spring prior to uh, planting of row crops. 
but whether it comes before or after our main row crop for that year, it's just another vehicle to produce more forage that can come into the feedlot and, and uh, be fed to the cattle and, and provide added feedstuffs. And then as far as soil health and, and those systems go, we don't know yet. Uh, this is the first fall and winter that I've uh, planted cover crops strictly for soil health, but uh, you know, if it, if it follows through like the rest of our cover cropping systems, I fully anticipate it to, to boost yields in the following cash crops that we're gonna plant. Uh, we don't have a specific blend that we use year in, year out. I like to try new things. I like to research with cover crops. Uh, to date, we've never found anything that just didn't work, but I'm a believer in uh, the blends. You know, if you look in nature, out in creation, uh, there's no such thing as a monoculture. You don't see just a, a forest of one species of tree or a grassland of one species of grass. There's always a lot of different species interacting with each other that are mutually beneficial to one another. And I like to try to replicate that in all of our, uh, all of our cropping systems, not just our cover crops. And, and we're even starting to integrate uh, different varieties and, and uh, you know, minor species into our row crop situations. I'm always available to uh, talk about cover crops and I'm always excited to talk about cover crops and, and uh, you know I'm my contact information's uh, easily found through either the grass and grain or the internet but uh, yeah I enjoy talking about what we're doing and, and what our our in-house research and, and experimentation is showing so yeah I'm, I'd be happy to talk to anybody. This is the fast track to more jobs and America's energy independence. Advanced performance is here now. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. Tarwater Farm and Home is a nearly 40-year-old local family-owned business. Clothing for work and play, seeds and feeds, boots, toys for the kids, the tools you need for around the home and farm, and a service department to keep them in top running order. It's a big store, so when you have some time, take some time to see what they have for your farm and home. Tarwater's everyday pricing is like others' sale prices. When you need it, they've got it. Tarwater Farm and Home, 4107 North Topeka Boulevard. Soil is the life of a farm, and for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine. Your stem cells, your health, your life. Good morning, I'm Crystal Miller of Inman High School. In this week's 4-H file, we meet Brooke and Brady Regeer of McPherson County. Hi, my name is Brooke Regeer. Hi, my name is Brady Regeer, and I am in the Country Cousins 4-H Club in McPherson County. Brooke and Brady Regeer have been a part of 4-H and have been working on their geology projects for seven years. Brooke and Brady each have two rock boxes and are continually adding to them. I do plan to continue and hopefully until I'm done with 4-H. For the Regeer girls, the geology project is a family affair. But there's um, four of us and three of us have two boxes and our youngest was her first year, so she has one. Sisters have always done it and we always like help them do their boxes and I've just always liked to do it. Um, you learn lots of rocks and just the, all the fossils and rocks and minerals. If you want to join 4-H, you don't need to own animals or spend a lot of money. It is a good way to learn more about life and spend time with your family. Meeting new friends, spending time with family. Aside from geology, Brooke and Brady have other projects. Flying, goats, um, food, art. Aside from their 4-H projects, the two have had opportunities to do volunteer work. Pack Operation Christmas Child Boxes. We help with loaves and fishes and at the Senior Center in Inman. Crystal Miller reporting for Ag AM in Kansas.
Closed captioning brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress, powered by Kansas farmers.